All right, guys, as you see, another rescue load. It's kind of crazy. Two nights, two rescue loads. Your hustle got to be strong in this industry, as in any other industry. I got here around around 10 p.m. it's 321 uh, so I'll be making it up there probably around 10 a.m. maybe a little after with gas stop and everything so that'll work out okay I was able to get some sleep so again that was good and that's the thing man like I know sometimes you show up places and things don't aren't like you know, because when I got here, they weren't sure what I was getting or what was going on. And then I was told that it's uh, the freight's being towed in. So I just went to sleep. <laughs> they said they'd call me. So I went to sleep, woke up occasionally, gave them a call, got an update. And like I said, I knew I needed sleep. I wanted sleep, so just took advantage of getting some sleep while I was waiting for the freight to get here. So I'm going to get everything situated get this stuff strapped down and everything and then I'm gonna get on my way okay so when I last updated you I was picking up going to Buffalo West Virginia so I headed out and while I was on my way to Buffalo West Virginia to drop I booked myself another load for that same night at 9 o'clock out of Columbus it was 137 miles from Buffalo West Virginia to Columbus it was two hours and 18 minutes to get there I made it to Buffalo, West Virginia to unload at 5.30. Now, had plenty of time. Get in there. Usually when I get there, I get in there. I get out. Uh, so I figured I was going to be out of there by 6. So that means I was going to make it up to Columbus by 8, 8, 8.30. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Have a half hour to spare. Wrong! So when I get there to Buffalo, they just tell me, pull over there to the side behind that truck. You know, you got to get an escort into the Toyota facility around back where they unload you. So I'm just sitting there, and I'm like BS and everything. And, you know, next thing I know, it's like close to an hour has passed. And I'm like, what? So I asked the guard, like, you know, are we going to get back there anytime soon? He's like, oh, I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be at least 7.15 before you get back there. I'm like, oh, shit. Because obviously if I get out of there at 7.15 or 7.30... I'm making it there past my pickup time. So now I'm like, man, I don't want to lose this load because it's going up to Michigan. It was going Columbus to Cadillac, Michigan. So I was like, man, I don't want to lose this. But at the same time, you know, I wanted to give the broker enough time if they didn't want to leave us on the load, if there was no time to uh, get there later and then pick it up. If there wasn't anything like that, I wanted to give them time to deal with what they had to deal with, you know. So I call the broker and I let them know. And they say, hey, we're going to look into it. We're going to find out. Because I told them, I said, I'll be there around 9.30, 10 o'clock, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. I said, but I'll easily make the uh, delivery time, which was 6.30 in the morning. And so they're like, let me check into it and everything. And about 20 minutes pass and then an updated rate con came through. I'm thinking, oh, man, they gave me a tanu or something or whatever. Uh, but all it was was just they was switching it over to another pro number so they had to issue a, a new rate con so everything was good there i was able to get there whenever i get there pick it up make my drop so i get out of there i didn't get out of buffalo west virginia i didn't get out of uh toyota until sorry i'm watching this guy this fedex guy back up he's creeping real slow because i'm back here and then there's a little flatbed truck over here Like, all right. All right, he got it. So anyhow, I didn't get out of Buffalo until, man, I want to say it was like 740. And so I had to stop and get gas and everything. So I'm booking ass up there. And for me, booking ass is, you know, doing 70 tops. So I got up there about 10 o'clock. I go in. I check in. I let them know. I'm saying, here, you know, I'm here picking up the uh, recovery load. Which, that's what's crazy about it. It was another recovery. I didn't find out until I was halfway there and the broker called me. He was like, oh, this is a recovery load. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, anyhow, I check in. Nobody knew what I was there for. I called the broker. They're just like, hey, we're going to call you back in a little bit. 
uh, let you know what's going on and see if we can figure out what, you know, what the pickup number is and everything. And I'm like, cool, fine. So I just went back out to the van and got some sleep. I just went ahead and went to sleep. Uh, <clears throat> got up about, about an hour and a half later. I hadn't heard from him. There wasn't no emails from the broker. So I called him, called back into the broker. I got a different person. And I'm like, well, hey, such and such was supposed to call me back. Oh, he's gone. He's like, let me reach out and see what's going on. So he puts me on hold. He comes back. He's like, hey, uh, the vehicle is still in route being towed. It's not on site yet. So when it's there, you know, we'll give you a call, let you know. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I hung up. I went back to sleep. <laughs> I went back to sleep. Slept for about another hour and a half, two hours. Woke up. Called the broker again. Broker said, oh, it should be on site. I'm like, okay. So I go in and check in. And dude's like, no, it ain't here yet. Like, they have to buzz in and come through the gate and all that. It's not here yet. So uh, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go back out to the van, go back to sleep. Just come out. If you would, just come out, knock on the van, wake me up when you're ready. And he's like, yeah, I'll come out there and get you. Went back out there. I wasn't out there 15 minutes, and he's knocking on the van, so they showed up. Uh, I don't know what happened to this guy's van, but he was on a the flatbed. They dropped him off the flatbed, unloaded the freight, loaded me up loaded the van back up took off and then i took off so as i said that picked up in columbus delivered this morning in cadillac michigan uh i moved down south about 50 60 miles uh pulled over got some lunch and was about to actually go to sleep i i uh texted a broker that I deal with who gets me some freight in Michigan. So I texted him and I let him know. I said, hey, if you get anything up here, make sure you call me. I said, I'm about to lay it down and get some sleep. So just call me, no, don't just text me. I laid down, nodded off, ring, ring. It was that broker. He had a load out of Michigan. So that's what I'm here doing right now is I'm picking up out of Romeo, Michigan and I'm going to Aiken, South Carolina. This is due tomorrow morning by 1030. Uh, it's 13 hour trip. So, what, it's 4.15 right now. So, you're talking about 5, 6. I get there about 6. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get about 3 hours sleep. I don't know how far I'm going to make it before I stop and sleep. But I am, I'm, running on, I'm running on fumes these last couple of days, man. Because, again, something that you have to be mindful of for any of you that are looking to do as far as get your own authority, be your own carrier, and bid your own stuff. That's the, that's the biggest downside to that. Especially... Especially if you want to have all the control. That's how I am. I don't, I'm not really big on letting every, letting anybody else book me. I do what I do the way I do it. I see things in a different way. So I book things the way I like them. So I'm always looking in the board. Very rarely am I like, hey, man, will you watch the boards? Just watch for something for me. Because, again, I've done it a lot in the past, and I just don't like it because I end up getting loads that I don't really care for or, or i wouldn't have taken or maybe it ain't the rate i would have tried or whatever it may be so i'm the one doing my own bidding like 99.9 percent .9 of the time so be mindful of that if you choose to do that that's what's going to happen you're going to be lacking sleep or any kind of time to yourself whenever you're out on the road trying to make money if you're choosing to constantly be going at it so if you recall in the last video i talked about I booked two different loads and I would have rather have taken the Jamestown, New York load. And it's funny how certain things play out sometimes because it's worked out well for me at the moment not having that load. So, you know, since I didn't take that load, I got the Columbus load and now I've got this load. And so it's, it's worked out pretty well. So sometimes, you know, what you think is the good one sometimes ain't. Uh, and that's the, that's the thing you have to figure out when you're out here. Like you just... In my opinion, you just have to roll with the punches at first. Just take the loads, take them where they take you. Then you start to learn what areas are, especially for each particular carrier because each carrier works differently. Just like the carrier I first started with was way different than when I was with Barrett. And then what I'm doing on my own is completely different than both of those. So it's just, it's always going to be different depending on the carrier or the, you know, how you're getting your load. So just be mindful of that. Not everything you see me do or you see somebody else on videos talk about what they're doing it's it, it may not be the same unless you are on with the same company then it could be similar other than that it's going to be way different possibly more than likely so once i got that columbus load to michigan and when i delivered it that was four loads in a matter of two days 
and again, it's been I've just been very fortunate because things have been soft overall, but I've been very fortunate this week so far in the, you know, coming out on a Tuesday, missing out on Monday. So I've been very fortunate. Now, tomorrow is going to be a tough one because it's Friday and it's in South Carolina and I'm not big on the Carolinas and Georgia area. So we're going to see what happens, see if we can, you know, work something or if we're stuck and <laughs> hopefully I don't, you know, my week don't end, you know, me dying there and Aiken, South Carolina. So we'll see how it all plays out. So I'm going to get off here for now, guys. If you haven't, like, subscribe, comment on this video, share this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.